So good afternoon. It is April 2nd. This is our DAC office hours for today. And we, as mentioned before, we repurposed in this session uh, to provide some additional support with rostering to make sure you feel comfortable and confident in doing so. We are going to utilize some different folks today, so you won't get to hear my wonderful accent for the next hour. But um, we're going to use some um, experts from NAWIA that will help us with this training. We're also going to use some experts from the field that are going to support you with this training. So on the call today, we do have um, from NAWIA, we have Fred Venezuela, who's our project manager. We have Alex Lutzi. And if I butcher your name, Alex, I'm really sorry, but he's on the call today and he's our primary contact when it comes to the technology elements and, and interrelation with roster and things like that. We do have Sarah Alpi on the call today and a lot of you will have um, listened to Sarah during the onboarding conversations. We have Andrew Wallace on the call from South Portland who's gonna be the primary presenter today and he's um, recruited some help from Joseph Knight. So we thank Joseph for also being here. And then department staff, we have our assessment team we also have Charlotte Ellis, um, Kathy Warren, um, and a few others that are joining us. So you have the robust team today at your disposal to help and support you through this process. Nawia team, is there anybody else I've missed who's on the call today? I do not believe so, Jeanette. I believe it was just the four of us in attendance today. Okay, perfect. And then, so Andy, I've made you a co-host. So I'm going to turn um, this session over to you. Andy's going to walk through um, a guide and some pieces that he's developed. He's also going to incorporate some help from Joseph regarding that. And then Alex is going to walk you through the roster and process in Mark, which is the system that Nawia uses. And then we'll do some Q&A for as long as we can. As always, any questions that you have, we will capture in our Q&A document, which will also be a way, uh, available for publishing after the session. So without further ado, Andy, the show is yours. Great. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, and I also wanted to uh, call out um, a colleague, Sam Eagleton from uh, Oxford Hills District RSU 17. Or is it SAD 17? I think it's SAD 17. Uh, and Sam has been really instrumental in supporting uh, his colleagues around SQL and ad hoc reporting from the infinite campus angle, uh, whereas we're also very fortunate to have assistance from Joseph, who is just such a a guru in the power school uh, world as well. So between those two people and the NWA team and your patience going through this, I think we're gonna have a good session. So the goal today, um, before I do this, actually, I'm gonna paste into the chat if I'm allowed to. Oh yeah, I'm allowed to, I'm a co-host. I can do all sorts of stuff. I can change my background. Oh, this is gonna be a good time. But um, I'll paste into the chat, basically what we're gonna cover today. And so um, what I'm hoping to get out of today is a session in which we can show you how to import students into NWEA, which is a critical first step in rostering. So we'll explore other ways you can prepare your proctor sessions as well as your staff data sessions, um, which would then be uploaded on top of the student information. You're gonna be able to, uh, you can, we hope you will follow along and actually follow the steps we do so that by the time we are done today, you will have all your kids that we uh, expect you to test inside the system. And then I will also link out to some sample SQL reports, as well as some sample ad hoc reports, as well as a template that for those of you who prefer to do things a little more manually. So there'll be three levels, depending on your technical comfort, uh, ways in which you can add proctors and add sessions. Uh, that will take a little bit of time, offline time on your, on your part, unless you're really quick with SQL. And so what I want to let folks know is to not worry about that step, right? Because we will have more technical assistance available next Thursday, the 8th, from noon until 1, noon until 1. And also, and I'll post this as well, you can always call, um, as Sarah had mentioned during the onboarding sessions, the NWA main specific uh, help desk at 855-430-1777, which is already in my cell phone. Uh, and they have just been really responsive and, and great to work with. So if you could all just give me one moment to pause and I'm going to paste into the chat a link to a Google Doc, um, which is a live document. I, I always believe in live documents because things change and this is the first time we've done this implementation uh, and we welcome feedback. So 
Always look for updated dates on documents that I tend to use because sometimes someone in the field will give me a tip that is better than anything I could ever have conceived of. So I, I really believe that things should be dynamic when they are without being um, inaccurate. So we're not going to share anything with you that's wrong, but know that over time, as we become more comfortable with this assessment, we are going to find shortcuts and tricks and ways to save us all time so we can focus on instruction and less time on preparing and proctoring tests. So just one moment. Okay, in the chat is what's called a tiny URL. So we all know how long those Google sharing links are, right? So if you were to click on this, tinyurl.com slash nwa rostering it should take you oh look at that i can watch it as a happening there's 10 people already in there you guys are really fast <laughs> 16 18 wow all right this is crazy this is good so you're all in the same document that i'm sort of speaking from and what we'll use to guide this session okay so i'll give everybody a second to get there and we're up to 35 already that's pretty amazing We'll also make sure this is added to our website. Yeah. Now, you already have access to it, but we'll add it to the website too, just as an FYI. Okay. So what, what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you some of the steps that I would do in which I have done recently to prepare South Portland's roster and student information. Um, out of some sort of empathy, we, we've waited to, I've got a blank slate. Um, at some point, we will transition to Alex because uh, out of respect for student privacy, we will use some dummy data, but I promise you, he's at no advantage over any of us. And so the process you're going to see is exactly the same process as you would go through. All right. So let me share my screen here. Fortunately, I have a new computer, so you won't see all the stuff on my desktop, which is usually a frightening place to be, my desktop. Okay. It's giving me whiteboard, but not my whole desktop. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just, we can switch between things. I'm gonna start with Chrome because that's where we're gonna do our first uh, actions. You should have an option, I need to see the whiteboard or, or windows even, like there should be windows. So you, there should be a, a menu on the right-hand side that you can drop down so you can see all tabs or all windows or all documents. It gives you multiple options. Okay. Um, can you, you can all see my, my, um, oh, hold shift to select multiple windows. Aha. Thank you. There you go. All right, go here and here, here. Oh, hope this works. Okay. Now this is all dummy student data. So don't worry about that. Now you all, now can you all see me as I move around? This is yeah, you guys have the you guys have the really nice version of Zoom up at the Department of Ed. I'm very impressed. Mine does not have these features, so uh, it'll take just a second for me to get used to it. But this is the document we're all on. There's 56 people in rising on my end, I can see. And so let's just talk about what's what's going on. So the main Department of Ed has created a roster of students, grades three through eight and third year high school, who are required to take the NWA. They've also included in this downloadable roster second year high school students uh, for whom the NWA is optional. Every day, a roster is created from information within the state synergy system. So as usual, I've got to say this to my colleagues, um, it's critically important that we stay up to date with our student enrollment updates inter synergy, and maybe even redouble our efforts because it takes two to tangle, right? You want to, when I let go of a kid from South Portland who moves over to Cape Elizabeth, I have to do my part, they have to do their part, and then it gets reflected in the roster file. Uh, so everybody just tree, tree, uh, try to be empathetic of one another and do these uploads as frequently as you can. Uh, the good news though, is since we are having more control over our rosters in the NWA solution, you can add kids on the fly in case your um, sending school has not been as um, prompt with their, with their effort, okay? But the best way to do it 
is to use this roster file that I'm going to show you in just a minute out of Neo because the state's data team did a great job working with NWA to really align things so it really matches. There's no guesswork involved. So when it says student ID, you know what it means. You're not thinking about, oh, is it the state ID? Is that the student ID in my information system? It really is a one-to-one -one match. It looks really great. So in order to get there, what you're going to do, and we can do this together, is you're going to browse to w, w, excuse me, HTTPS slash colon 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 slash slash neo.main.gov. So you can click right on that link in the document if you like. And that will take you to the state NEO page. I sent out an informal blast to the curriculum directors and the tech directors last night. So I hope most people have their NEO access. If you don't, uh, just follow along. So in NEO, you log in here. In my case, it's my email address. I don't think uh, 58 people have hit the NEO website simultaneously before, so fingers crossed. Oh, wow, that was quick, good. All right, so now I'm within the NEO system. This is where the Department of Ed keeps a lot of data. And you do need access. If you find that you don't have access, your superintendent will have to fill out a form uh, that will give you access. But within NEO, there's two ways to get to this information. Student data is one way up here, and then student data down here. So I'm just gonna click this one. And then I'm going to click here to enter the student reports. So many of us have been in here before looking for things like um, what kids are taking the science assessment or open enroll, uh, enrollment certifications, things like that. But today we're going to look at the NWA mathematics reading uh, grade second through high school. Now I'm going to pause my sharing just for a moment um, because I want to make sure that nobody sees any of our student data. So. Is there a pause share or stop share? Oh, well, you know what? I know a trick. If I do it like this, there's no way you're going to see it. And I'll just expand. View report. Okay. Now you can see here that below has been generated for South Portland schools, all my schools, NWA math reading, and you can see the, the details there. Okay. And so I'm slowly creeping down. I'm just nervous. I want to be sure I'm a big privacy guy. Okay, so this is good enough. This is what you can see. So beneath these would be student information uh, that would be relevant, as well as information about your district that's important when you start to populate the NWA um, um, data set. If you were only interested, say you just were concerned with your high school or one of your elementary schools, you can come here and you can sort or search just for a particular school. So you would click this and you would hit view report and it would limit it just to that school. I know some people might decide to tackle high school a little differently than they tackle the elementary and middle schools. So if that's the case, feel free to go in school by school to look at the information that way. It just might help you organize a little bit better because not all of us are gonna test second year high school kids, uh, but we all are gonna test the third year high school kids. So without you know changing this report, I can now, if I were to scroll down below this blue bar, I would start seeing actual student names, okay? Now, if you wanna save this file, you click here on this little floppy disk. So you see the floppy disk? You wanna choose from many, many choices, right? Which is a lot of choices. I don't even know what half of these things are. I have no idea what an MHTML file is, but I do know what I want this in is either Excel or CSV. So I'd like to talk about Excel first. So the Excel formatted download, which will also, by the way, since this is main, it will open on your Mac in numbers. And since we love Google, it'll open in Google as well. Uh, this will generate information in almost exactly the way NWA roster files should be formatted. So were I to click Excel, it would download a file for me here. And then I could open that file in whatever my preferred spreadsheet software was, okay? Um, and so let's do that. I'll show you some, some uh, data that's not real on some of my not real kids. I mean, they're unreal in their own way, but not real. Hang on a sec. Wow, this is a busy, busy background <laughs> when you've got it going this way.
Ah, uh, here it is. Okay. So it's going to look a lot like this, right? Did you, I can't see you all. Can we get some nodding heads or some thumbs up if things look the way you feel like they're supposed to look? Is anybody, can someone who can see the participants tell me, are they shaking their heads up and down or left and right? We can see the um, spreadsheet, the Excel document. Right. So folks at home, so to speak, who actually tried it, they should be seeing something that look, looks just like this. And what you need to do in order to make this ingestible into the NWA system is you need to clean up some of these headers, right? So these pretty sort of uh, graphics. And the, the steps will tell you this. So don't, don't feel like you need to scramble to get this exactly right. But you're going to delete rows 1 through 12. You highlight the row, rows, go up to edit, and you delete them. So now you look something that looks a little cleaner, something like this, right? So you've got all your fields. And if you were to scroll over here, again, this is not real student data, you could see more information about the students. This is the stuff over here that is gonna be really important that gets pulled in. So you've got student gender, grade, ethnicity, birth dates, student ID, state ID. Uh, a lot of power school folks use the old student IDs that were generated out of power school. Uh, in this case, you're gonna to wanna to use a state ID. It will accept both. If you wanted to drastically change, if you were an existing NWA customer and you wanted to change over to the state IDs, you can do that. It's pretty cool just by populating the previous ID. And then when you ingest the kids, it'll allow you to merge them with the new state ID. But for those of us who are brand new to the system, your data should look just like this. You're gonna see a lot of blank fields, right? You'll see all this sort of white space here. This is what's relevant when it comes to um, proctoring the exam, okay? And so the files that we shared with you at the top and at the bottom of the guide that you're all looking at right now, that those files are sample SQL, sample ad hoc reports that based on your skill level um, or comfort level, you will be able to generate them and create a new thing, a new spreadsheet that looks a lot like this, except there'll be no white space. Everything would be filled in, okay? If you wanna know what things like previous instructor ID means, look, you can see within this document as well, a, de uh, a explanation of that under the NWA roster file template. And that's listed here multiple times within this document. And if someone could paste that into the chat, that would be great too. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to pull that off. Okay, so now what we've got here is not, remember we downloaded something as an Excel sheet, right? So like most computer data systems, you need to convert it to a CSV in order to import it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to file and I'm gonna do save as, and this is really important because this is where I make mistakes all the time. I click here and I grab the very first one. That looks really, right? It says .csv. You would think that would work. But what you really want is you want to scroll down a little bit further and just pick the one that's called simply comma separated values. If you do that and you hit save, you will then you're have- you're not seeing that screen. You're not seeing the screen? Okay. Well, then trust me on this. Oh, it's probably because it's a- it's a file screen, but if you're following along, if you click on save as, and by the way, there's a picture of this in the guide, you will see comma separated values instead of the one that is UT7 or UT8. When I hit save, I'm going to get an error message. Do you all see this error message? Varun, you see that? Yes. Good. So this error message seems pretty intimidating, but I'm telling you just delete it. Hit the X right here. So now what you have is a CSV. It looks a lot like the other one, but you now have a CSV. It is in a format that is much more understandable to computers. Uh, things will scrunch over. It'll remove extra characters. It will just sort of be a more computer-friendly uh, version of data that can be uploaded into Infinite Campus. Okay. Now, remember I told you in Neo, there was another export you could do. If you were to click here and export as a CSV, this is valuable in that when you click this, you will get a sheet. Uh, and again, um, 
you'll get a, another download, another spreadsheet, but it will not be formatted for NWA. So do not try to make this work for NWA, but you should use it for your own information purposes. Again, this is all written in the document, but the CSV created from uh, access from Neo directly as a CSV allows you to see more of the data that's sort of behind the scenes, right? This can help you better plan your testing of students in the third grade of high school because it will tell you if the kid is in the second or third year of high school. Whereas the original export, which was designed specifically to match NWA, does not provide that information. Uh, the data team also had the foresight, which was hugely important and helpful to us, that when you every time you come here to generate this export, the CSV or the Excel, they have another hidden field, which is uh, enrollment date. And so the default, when you uh, run any of these reports, will show you the newest kids to your district. So I know in the past, when a kid comes into the district at the last minute, it's almost like you weren't, as the tech person or the curriculum person, psychically aware that a kid came in. This is really helpful. Run this report often. I'm not saying you have to do this process all the time, but for me, I'm going to get in the habit of running this report every day to see if there are new kids that I should be adding. And there's a couple of ways to add them. You could do this whole process, or after you do the process that Alex is going to show you, you could then individually add students. So Alex, time permitting, is also going to show you uh, how to do that. So the next part will be, we're going to log into, Infinite, into NWA, and Alex is going to demonstrate how to import the student records, okay? So this is the point in which I hand it over to him because you would, I would be revealing way too much private information. Uh, and so we will show you that. We're gonna show you also how to upload individual students. And then from there, we'll adjust the, the agenda as, as things go. But, and again, always keep the questions coming. I can't see the questions while I'm presenting, but now that I'm gonna hand off to Alex, I'll be able to look at some of the questions. And as with all the office hours, Regina gathers the questions and we answer them in the formal process too. So I'm gonna stop my screen share for a moment. Great, all right, thanks, Andy. Yeah, so, hey everyone, my name's Alex. You might've seen me in some of the recent uh, professional learning webinars that we've had or some emails. Like Andy said, I'm gonna walk us through how to import rosters into the system. You might've had a chance to see this with uh, the onboarding webinars that Sarah and Emily have been leading too. So it might be a recap for some, but we'll make sure everyone understands what you need to do. So I'm sharing my screen here and there we go. So actually, let me just log out really quick so you can kind of see um, how to get here. So this is going to be the uh, MARC site that Andy mentioned. So Map Administration and Reporting Center, MARC. Um, once you get here, you'll be able to just put in your username and password and log in. If you haven't gotten that yet, as long as you go through the onboarding process, then that'll help you get your users created. So feel free to refer to some of that documentation. Then once you get signed in, here's gonna be the main page. And then here along the left under import profiles and rostering is where you go to actually import the file. So um, I do wanna call out a couple of things before we go into there. So what everyone should have done as part of the onboarding when they get their district set up here, their district account set up is going in and creating their schools. So to do that, you'll go to modify preferences and then modify district. And we've got this kind of sample environment. It's got a bunch of fake schools and, and dummy student data again, so there's no privacy concerns. But um, here is where the schools for this uh, sample district are. So you could go in and you could add a school and you would just wanna make sure that all of the schools you're gonna be testing and rostering for have been added in here. And also keep in mind this custom name field, that's the name that the roster is gonna be looking for to identify your school. So what you may see is when you do that export out of Neo, there may be a discrepancy between the school names, but there is a way to easily go in and resolve that. You can edit that file and put these names right into that roster file so it aligns. But even if you don't, it'll walk you through selecting the correct school uh, through the page. Also something else to consider are um, custom grades and ethnic group names. So uh, these are the ethnic group names that are, are standard in our system, but there may be some um, that look a little different on the export from NEO. We, there may just be differences in punctuation and things like that. But again, it'll give you the opportunity to correct that as you're doing the file, which we'll show. But if you um, paste this into the file ahead of time, that's another way just to head off those errors. All right, so let me go through and we'll start doing an import. 
And um, what I do want to call out is just like Andy said, that that data export that you get from Neo, as long as you choose the Excel file, then you'll see that it has all of those columns to, to properly match the roster file template that you use to import your rosters into NWEA. So uh, what you can do, there's there's kind of two ways you can go about doing it. And as we've gotten some more details on what that file looks like as the DOEs help to produce it, um, we were kind of thinking of two different ways. So essentially, once you get that file export, it's gonna have all the student information that you need, but the teacher information won't be present there. So you can import that file as a student only import as it is, um, just like Andy pointed out, you'll need to remove those, those first 12 or so rows so that the header row with your data is the first row that's showing. But then you can go in and choose uh, the spring term. So make sure it's on the right term, leave it on standard. And then here you do an add update students only import. And then we'll add the file here. And I've got an example here. All right, so you select your file. It does have to be a CSV file. So when you do that export out of Neo, it will be an Excel file. So just like Andy showed and like it's outlined in the document, you wanna make sure to resave it as CSV comma delimited. Don't use that UTF-8 because that can cause some errors. Then you'll go ahead and click on next. And then here it's gonna actually give you a chance to preview the file. So you can take a quick look, make sure all the data is aligned in the columns where they should be, that things are in the right place. And if that all looks good at first glance, then you can confirm. And then it'll go through this next step for a couple moments. It's gonna be um, queuing the file up and processing. And this usually just takes a minute or two here. So it'll validate the file and then it'll give us a chance to view and reconcile any errors that may come up in the file. And while we're here, you can go in here and look at any um, history of roster imports. So if you want to check if somebody else in your districts has imported one or um, if the last one you did process properly, if it was canceled or posted, that's another good way to see if rostering was successful. But at this point, we do see there were some errors and that's expected. I wanted to make sure we had a chance to, to go through some of them together. So you would click on review import summary here. And then here in this case, it's going to show how many students were in the file. It'll give you kind of a breakdown of what's in there. In this case, we're going to go in and reconcile the errors. And we see some of those ones I mentioned before. So school errors, what that means is the name of the school in that file itself doesn't exactly match the name of the schools that are in the system. So you have the chance to align those. And then ethnic group errors, same thing. The name in the file doesn't match what's in the system. And it'd be the same for all of these. So you can go in and pick the correct one. Then in cases of instructor or student errors, it's the same type of thing where um, the data that's in the file doesn't match students or instructors that are already in the system. So you have the option to go in and reconcile. So we'll go into school errors here. And um, on my sample data, we have it as, as Green Valley, but the school we're actually gonna use is a completely different one. So let me go in. Um, what, you, what you can do is start typing in the correct name of the school and then it'll actually drop down. So if you know the name of the school as it is in the system, then you can put it in here. You can again go to modify district to double check what they are, select the school and then save and next. So that'll essentially update um, where those students are associated with. It'll correct that incorrect school name. So then here we'll go in and change it. In this case, we have experience school as our, our demo school we'll put in, save it next. And then that'll return you here to this uh, error reconciliation screen. So now we see the school errors, errors remaining zero, errors reconciled two. We can go to ethnic group errors next. All right, and then you'll see the incoming name. So on the file, we have the ethnic group just listed as black, but in our system, it's actually listed as black or African-American. So you'll just wanna choose the correct ethnic group that matches the one that uh, was intended on the file. Once you make that selection, save and next. All right, and then in this case, those were the errors we had here. So once those have been corrected, you can click on return to import summary. And then there is one final click you'll need to make of post valid records. So you just wanna double check that all the errors remaining are at zero, and then you can click on post valid records. You'll get a pop-up asking if you're sure, so hit okay. And then this will uh, add the students into the system. 
So in the case that we did just now, we did a student only import using that file export out of NEO. That's gonna roster all the students in the system. But like we mentioned, uh, the teacher and class info was not present in that file and that is still needed. So that's where you can use some of those SQL or ad hoc queries that Andy was talking about to export your full roster out of uh, PowerSchool or out of Infinite Campus. That'll make sure the teacher and class information's in there since that's not, not present in NEO and not something that can be provided in that file. So doing it this way, the NEO file will add all the students in who are expected to test and then generating that file out of PowerSchool or Infinite Campus should pro uh, provide the same students and will also add the teacher and classes in there so that um, when you do that import, you would need to do one more import with that file and go through just the standard one. Since it's not a students only one this time, we'll do standard and add the file. And in this case, I've got one here. All right, so this is the file that has um, the class information in as well. So we'll continue. And you know, as you see here, those columns with the, the teacher and class info are populated. So this would be the file you're getting out of your SIS. Continue on, and then again, it'll take a moment to validate the data here. I feel like we should get some Jeopardy music playing. All right. There it goes. All right, so then in this case, something else that may come up is if it's saying that there's errors in the source file. And I, I did um, add some errors to this file so we have a chance to walk through it. Then that does mean there are things that need to be corrected within the file. So hopefully this, this doesn't end up happening to you, but I want us to walk through that situation in case it does. So in this case, what you'll see is here, it's showing that um, in, in the second row of the file, in the column for instructor ID, it's saying username must be the same for this instructor ID. So that tells us among this one instructor ID that one of the usernames is incorrect. There's multiple usernames being provided for this instructor ID. So in that case, we'll go back to the file. So I'll switch my screen share to the file. And again, it's all just dummy data here. There we go. All right, so here's the file like you saw in that preview on the page. So we know that the among the instructor ID, one of the usernames is incorrect, and that's the one on starting on row two. So an easy way to do that is since we know the instructor ID, um, among this, one of the usernames is wrong. So you can right click that cell and you can do filter, filter by selected cells value. And then, so here it's filtering to only show lines with this instructor. And we can see right here, this username has a typo. There's an extra three at the beginning that's not supposed to be there. So we can go in and clear that out. Now these are all consistent. So the same ID is matching the same username. That's good to go. We can turn the filtering back off. There we go. And then there was one other error that came up. So in this case, um, starting on row three with this teacher, so the username cannot be the same for more than one instructor ID. So that means among this username, more than one ID is provided. And sorry, I, I went back to the screen without changing the share, but that's the error that was showing on the page. So what we can do here is we want to go to that particular username. So we can see right here and filter this username. So you can right click filter by selected cells value there we go. So now we're only looking at all the lines that have this, this username. And then we are seeing if you compare among here, here's the, the outlier, the one that's incorrect. So you can delete that and correct the typo. And then um, you can turn the filtering back off and then update the file. So we also do have these, these uh, instructions available in our help center. So now that the file's saved, let me close this and go back to sharing the other screen. There we go. All right. So from here, um, you also do have the option to export errors to CSV. So if you do find that several errors are coming up, you can export that file and it'll just create a file showing the errors there so that it's easier for you to keep track of and work from. 
But in this case, um, since we had to correct the source file, this, this didn't give us a chance to reconcile the errors like before with the school names. You actually do have to edit that file and start over. So we'll cancel here. We'll start a new import now. And once again, since this is not the student only information, we want to do the standard since it has the teacher and class info we're looking for. All right, we'll select that one now and continue on here next. All right, everything's still looking good here. Here's where you can look in and see if you wanted to, if those um, changes you made are reflected there, and then you can confirm. And this time while we're waiting for it to process, I do wanna show everyone this help center. So what's really great about the MARC site is wherever you are, there's a help page for that specific action you're trying to take. So if you click on help while you're rostering, then it'll actually walk you through um, resolving errors. There's a guidance page here. There's a video uh, walking you through some of the steps that I just did, showing you um, how to filter and how to identify your errors to correct them if you need to. So generally these types of errors shouldn't be popping up all the time, but in case they do, you can go right in here to find those steps to resolve them. All right, there we go. So we do see in this case, it does show um, that there are still reconcilable errors, but the, the errors that we did have are no longer coming up. So that's good. So in this case, there's only one. And when it's a reconcilable error, it's one you can fix right through the website. You don't need to edit the file again. I think it's still just gonna be that school name. So we'll go in here, we have sample school. In my case, our sample school is experience school. Save and next. All right, and errors are down to uh, zero remaining in this column. Return to the import summary, and then we can post valid records there and that's the final step. So this way, uh, we kind of simulated going through getting that export from Neo, choosing that Excel option, cutting out those, those header rows so the data aligns with uh, the headers of the data being the very top row, resaving that one as CSV, so that one's ready to go. Then you can import that in as a student-only import. That'll add all the students into the system. Then at that point, you would use um, some of those SQL queries or whatever process you normally do. I saw in the chat some people are already used to exporting out of PowerSchool or Infinite Campus. So you can export your roster with your teacher and class info do an import just the standard way that I just demonstrated. And then that should make sure all the students are in, all the teachers and classes are in, and everything is in there ready for you to, to test. I do want to um, call out a couple other things. So as far as people who are brand new for, for users, getting your users created, any teachers that are included in that second file, it's gonna automatically create their user account using the username field and the email address. So they'll get an email and they'll get their login credentials and they can create a password. If you do have other users in your district that aren't teachers, different roles like you know system administrator, assessment coordinator, you can um, add those in via a roster file as well if you want to do it in bulk. There is an additional users template that's available. So let me show you where to find that. So here on the home page, you can go to the roster file template right here. So I'll download that and I'll share this window real quick. There we go. All right, switch to share. Too many monitors, okay. All right, so you'll see this roster file template here and the additional users template is here along the bottom. So here it'll show you how to create this file and the blue columns are the ones that are required. So um, in this case, you wanna fill out as much as you can, but not all of them are required. So you can add in the uh, user's first name, last name, create a username, which does need to be unique throughout all of NWEA. So we just recommend putting the email address in there. Those are always unique and then actually putting their email in. So if they ever need a password reset, it'll go to that email. And then as you keep going, here's where you can assign those roles in bulk. So um, you would basically just put a Y if you, to, as a yes, if you want to assign that role or just leave it blank if you don't want to assign it or don't want to make a change. And then you can go in and um, assign those in bulk and then import that file. There is an option for an um, additional user import when you're adding the file in and then that'll create your users. So something else to call out is a lot of the time teachers are gonna be the ones proctoring. And when you do the regular student roster we did a moment ago, that will create teacher profiles, but it doesn't automatically give them the proctor role. 
So what you can do in that case, you can um, add that role using this template. But if you already have them in the system and you want to do it manually, I want to give us a chance to look at that too. So switch the screen back. And hopefully if I am running, um, cutting it close on time, someone will chime in and let me know. OK, great. See <laughs> great. Thanks, Andy. All right. OK, so we're back on the website again. So we want to go to Manage Users here. And this is where you can go in and either create a new user um, if you want to do it manually instead of doing that additional user file, or you can edit existing users. Um, let's see, hopefully we've got a couple in here with a common last name. There we go. Let's look at Amanda Jones. So you can search by their name or ID. You'll see them in the results here. View and update the profile. And then anything with this red star is going to be required. So that's their username. Um, there's their ID, first name, last name. And then here's the roles that they have. So essentially along the left, this is going to list all the roles that you have access to give to someone. That's going to change depending on your role. If you're a system admin, you can assign everything. If you're just a teacher, you're not going to see much in there. And then um, you can go in and select which role you want to assign. In this case, she already has a district proctor role. So that's perfect. It's already been added over. You can continue on here. And then um, you can select which term depending on the role. So actually in this case, let me bring it back up instructor here. Actually, we should just be able to submit past that because we don't need to select a term here. So yeah, so um, I had added the district proctor role. When you get to this final screen, it's always going to give you a summary of their existing roles. So since she's an instructor, it's going to show you the existing classes so you can make sure those look accurate. And then you can click on submit to save the change. And then you'll get this message whenever you make any manual changes, whether it's adding or editing a student or a user, you do need to make sure to click submit all the way through to the end because it doesn't save your changes until you see this message that the profile has been updated successfully. That's how you know it's saved and ready to go. So I also want to take a moment to go over adding students in. So definitely you can use that roster process, but if there's just one or two kids that are, are new to the district and you need to add them in to test them, then you can go to create student here. And again, you wanna fill out anything here that's required. Um, the star means that it's required to create the profile. The red R mean it's, means it's required for that student's results to show on reports. So you can create a profile without it, but we still always recommend filling out both. Otherwise you're not gonna see that data uh, for that student until you add the missing fields. So um, let's see, I'm just gonna put in sample student. Let's do five, because that's probably been used before. Let's put in some numbers here. We'll choose a gender and let's choose a date of birth. Jump back several years. All right, continue. Okay, so then you will always need to choose which term that you're adding them to. In this case, it's gonna be the spring term and then put in their correct grade level. Let's do fifth grade here. Probably not correct with the year I chose, but that's that's fine for now. And then you want to choose what their um, appropriate ethnic group is. So we'll choose one there. And then um, keep in mind only the ones with the R or the star are required. So there's extra things that can be specified, but they're not they're not necessary. And honestly, these don't really um, come out on the reports, so you don't really need to worry about those. You want to jump down to school. And here's where we'll have a chance to look at the different schools. Let's do that experience school again. Actually, started with an X. There we go. All right, so we'll roster this student to this school, add, and then here you'll want to add a class in as well. So if you choose the school, then it'll know all of the instructors that are in that school. Here we go, we'll select one of those. Here's the different classes. So you can choose a class and add to that class. So it'll move to the column on the right, showing which classes will be assigned. And you can add classes. All right, so at this point, we should have all the required fields filled out. Um, if the student is participating in any special programs, you can add those here, but that's also optional. And then we'll add. All right, give you another chance to confirm it all looks good and continue. All right, and then one final summary. So you'll see the school, teacher, and class. And if that looks good, that's when you click Submit to save the change. And then once again, you'll see that profile has been created successfully message, so you know that it's good to go. Um, let's see, I think, 
Yeah, I think that that covers everything for rostering, for manually adding a user and a student. Um, Andy, was there anything else we wanted to demonstrate? Uh, I don't want to No, I think those are the key things to demonstrate. Um, I, one of the things I wish we could have seen, because the first time you see it, the first time I saw it was a little bit jarring, mm -hmm. is when you get an error message about importing a kid. And sometimes that comes across because um, maybe the first time you tested that kid, you put in the wrong state ID, or uh, in some cases, actually, a number of cases in, in my district, um, we have students whose um, uh, gender, preferred gender is different than gender assigned at birth or, or even a name that's different, right? And so we know that the state requires the legal gender. Uh, one thing that would generate an, an error message, right? And so what you can do, because it has no consequence on the local administration of the test, is if you got those errors, you could manually fix them in that spreadsheet before you uploaded them. And that has no implications to the Department of Ed because they ascribe the other attributes. And the same would go if you ever had a mismatch on uh, race ethnicity. Because what you have in your system is what you have in your system. The department will take out the relevant information that they have and combine it back into the database of record, which is Synergy. So um, if you wanna be sensitive to students in that situation, which I would advise, you can make that modification so that when they're selecting their name from a list or if a proctor is mentioning their name, they get the preferred name. Um, but don't be afraid. It's sometimes scary when it says, do you want to overwrite or do you want to merge students? That's, that's an intimidating thing, but it really is just like Alex showed when you, when you get the name of the school wrong. It's not that you got it wrong. It's that you put in a simplified name and we know the Medem's names are the full names of the schools. It doesn't erase anybody. It doesn't do anything horrible. It just lets the system know it's the same person or the same school. Yeah, thanks, Andy. That's that's really good to point out. And I do have um, some screenshots here of that that situation so we can walk through it. So just like like Andy said, let's say on the roster you're importing, maybe it's the one that you got from Neo. Um, that one's likely going to have the students like legal name and legal gender um, as defined in Neo, but maybe they go by different designations within the district. So as you're trying to do that import, you may see that there's a, a conflict. Um, if, if that student's already in the system and you're importing the Neo file, then it'll come up with a conflict. Vice versa, if you're importing your district file and maybe that has their preferred information, but the information that's already um, been added from that first Neo student file is different, then you'll see, you'll see this screen right here. Maybe I can make it a little bigger. There we go. So you'll see these uh, five options. So above this window, it's going to show the information on your file. So whenever you see these options, it's going to use the information on the file that you are currently importing as the most up-to-date info. So you'll either have the option to do not reconcile. That really just skips the error and you'll still have to come back and fix it. So that really doesn't get you anywhere. Um, there, there may be an option to update the username or email if that's what was incorrect. But then here, number three is the one that we want to consider. So it'll ask, do you want to update the existing user or student with the incoming record? What that means is the student we're seeing right here would be overwritten with what's on the file. And it'll actually show the info on the file right above the words error reconciliation. So you can see, okay, here on top, um, it shows you know their preferred name. That's the name that we want to appear in the system and appear when they're signing in. So in that case, you could click number three and it would update what exists here on this number three line with what's coming in from the file. If you're seeing the, the um, it's vice versa, that's true for you. If the one showing in, in number three is the correct one and the one at the top that's in the file is not correct, then you can choose um, to not import at that time. And there is an option to export your errors to CSV like I showed earlier. That'd be an easy way to get a file of all those students that are uh, mismatched or don't have the exact right attributes. So you know which ones to go in, correct that, that source file you were just importing, and then start the import again. And then that'll give you a chance to align it to the proper name. So hopefully that clears things up. And once again, this help center has these screenshots and has videos and walkthroughs that'll help you. And we also do have our support number available too. So um, we provided it earlier, but feel free to reach out to us at NWEA. The best number is 855-430-1777.
All right, I think for now, I wanna make sure we have time to answer questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing and let's go to the q and I, I have to call out, I mean, I think the single most common question is about Clever, right? Everybody has a process or not just, you know, it's about Clever, but also that folks have a process. So, you know, the primary target audience today was for folks that had never done NWE, NWEA. However, there's still a lot of information that can be gleaned from that Excel report or the CSV out of NEO. For example, Clever doesn't necessarily know if a student is a third year high school student or a second year high school student. Uh, Clever doesn't necessarily know if there's been a, a move um, from one district to yours. I mean, it kind of would know that, I take that back. Um, that said, there's also three additional fields and some people were talking about them that I do not believe Clever is pulling over yet. And so I'm certainly not a Clever expert, but I would love to work with anybody who wanted to spend a half hour with me. Maybe we can get Clever on the line. I know that sometimes that's easier said than done, but I have had success with that. Um, if there's an established Clever customer, there are three fields we need to be sure we have going forward. One is the school medems code. And I do not believe that comes over in Clever. The second is, I saw a couple of people mention, um, Paul and a few others, that they perhaps, this is very true usually of legacy power school schools, they don't use a student state ID. And we do need to have that nine digit student state ID in there. And then the third one is uh, an alternate staff ID, which is not required, but you may get uh, errors generated if those are not, if that column isn't brought into a manual import or via Clever. So yes, Clever will continue to function, but I think there'll be a little bit of work. Um, if anybody wants to send me an email, uh, my email is in the document and I would love to hook up with someone and we can test that out at a local district district that is an existing clever and an existing NWA client. Okay, we also had a question of if we have already set up rosters from our infinite campus, will this be okay? That goes back to that that very same thing, right? So if you were to look at the the latest roster file, you'll notice uh, column A, column O, and column, uh, I don't remember the other one, but you, you'll see them, they're, they're new, and we'll highlight them as being new. Those are what you wanna make sure. And if you've already got a, a solution in place, like, like I do, I'm just gonna go in and add those things, and the majority of them are optional. But again, when you're importing a document or a template, you wanna make sure you have all those fields represented. So it's not gonna be a lot of work. I mean, we all know how to get our metams numbers out. It's just one more field that you want to make sure is in your roster as you upload them. Is yeah, just add on to that. Yep, exactly. So um, yeah, the, the main difference in those fields is those are the school state code field and the student state ID field. So those of you who have been using NWEA, um, student state ID has been there as an option, but since it's not required, you may not have used it before, but moving forward, you will want to add the student state ID into that column. And that is column, so column O. Super, Alex, that was the next question. All right, for, let's see, our SAU previously used NWA years ago. Many of our teachers and admins still have active accounts in the system. Is there a way to prompt them with a welcome even though they have an ex pre-existing account? Many of them are looking for an welcome email and only some are getting them. So you would only get a welcome email if you were a new user is my understanding. However, you can pop into the system and Heidi, I'm sure you don't want to hear it, but the way, the way to do it is you, you go in and you individually send them a reminder email. So um, that's what you would do. I would be wary. I always, um, I had this problem in the past. Sometimes people would change their email address or get married or divorced and, or change their names. Um, so you go in, you press a button that says send reminder email, and then make sure you hit submit at the bottom and they will get that email. Yeah, another thing that they can do is if they know they have an account um, before and if they are using the same email, then when they're trying to log in, there's that forgot username or password link. If they just put in their email, then it'll it'll send them a, a link to create a new password. So that may that may look like you just emailing your staff, hey, if you've had NWEA, please try logging in and doing forgot my password. Um, and then that can help them get back in. The other thing I would strongly urge people to is when you know, in between now and next week, 
or whenever it is you want to do this process, if you look at the technical um, link on the on the Google Drive, uh, uh, the, sorry, the Google Doc, it'll bring you to some sample SQL, some sample ad hocs. Uh, but I would strongly urge you, I saw some comments about making big groups or small groups or special groups. If you make things that are associated like with just English class and math class, those instructors will all get their accounts generated automatically. And what is good, I would urge you, if you can, and I know this is an unusual time, but if you can get those English and math teachers to proctor, then when they go in, it'll be much easier for them to select all their students because there's an option for them to test. I think it's called test my class. And it automatically brings up the kids that are associated with that class. If I were doing this for year one, I would try my darndest to find a way to you know, cajole those English and math teachers to give this assessment because it will be the simplest process for you to do. All right, we have a question. I think it was Norma Jean that you asked, it should it be downloaded or uploaded all or by school? And I'm not sure whether we've answered that question for you or not. Yeah, I can jump in there. So um, it sounds like I'm guessing they're talking about the Neo export since that has the option to do the whole district or by school. So honestly, it can be imported into our system either way. You can do it all in one file by district. You'll just need to make sure um, each school is identified and that's how, how it looks like it should export out of Neo. Um, that, that will just mean you'll need to make sure the school names match what's in the system or you'll have that option to, to reconcile and choose which school, but you can do it either way. Okay. Can I do the Neo upload with, oh, all right, there's another one with all students and then upload class and teacher data by school? Yes, you can. Yep. Super You'll just want to make sure all schools eventually do get uploaded though. So if you're doing them by school, make sure somebody's getting the other schools in. Is there a document for existing NWEA users that show what we need to do or do differently? If not, this may save time for districts that currently use NWEA. Yeah, that's a good call out. So um, there's not one currently, but we can get one drafted and have that provided. Um, the main things you'll wanna keep in mind is you're gonna need to start using the school state code uh, field and the student state ID field. Um, and then going through NEO to make sure that all of the students that you're expected to test in that NEO export are rostered. So those are really going to be the, the main differences. Um, and then also for Clever, if you are using Clever, just making sure those, those new state fields are being shared out of Clever too. So I can work on um, us just listing those steps out and having that somewhere we can share. Okay, let's see. And as a new district, um, some of what's I'm struggling with is an overall not is with overall strategy, not process. So they're they're specifically addressing you know uh, the impacts of certain decisions, and I'm not sure. Will I, Will Bachman? I think you asked this question. Would you like to clarify? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I answered it, I think. And, and, you know, actually, though, Will, you bring up a good point. I would love to maybe informally have a group of like veteran folks uh, like Joseph, are you out there, for example? Yes, yes, I am. All right. So like a guy like Joseph uh, knows, knows this up and down for the power school community. And, you know, maybe at the power school users group or the infinite campus users group, we talk about some strategies. Do you think those groups would be open to the, that sort of approach? Absolutely. Great. I know we've been discussing it somewhat already. And, I, and I'll try to uh, get the infinite campus group to do the same as well. And maybe, um, maybe at an informal meeting, we can all just share strategies. And I, I get what you're saying. Like sometimes you make a decision and you don't realize the impact. So like bringing in all the kids under one class Seems like a great idea up front, but it might impact how your proctoring goes. So yeah, I think that that might be a kind of a lessons learned or things to avoid from the, the veterans with the war scars, so to speak. Yeah, and I think, you know, for me, some of it comes from, you know, we're worried that we're going to misapply practices from 
prior testing technologies. You know, and, and we've gone, you know, two testing technologies ago, there was a lot of teacher involvement. They had to wait for all the kids to show up as ready to take the test and then push the button that said they released the test, which means there really had to be a very clear one-to-one -one relationship between the teacher who was proctoring the students and those students. And then in the last one that we had, it was set up so there was almost no computer interaction required by the teacher. The teachers didn't have to log into anything in order to kick the students off. And so I think in that one, the kids were just there. <laughs> you know, and I think they were just kind of in one big pool. There wasn't much for us to do. Um, you know, and for us, I think obviously at the elementary school grade levels, it's probably typical that, you know, a, a fourth graders teacher who is their teacher throughout most of the day will likely be the one that proctors them. And then the question was, you know, at the high school level, would we just pick like sometimes we just have advisor advisee. So what we would just say as long as the AA teacher is going to be their proctor for both things, you know, and some of it is it's really not even questions that I have. But I imagine the building admins are going to ask me like I'm, you know, and so this is my opportunity to try and imagine as many possible questions as I might get, because we won't have, this is a great opportunity to have some experts, you know, and so like when people mention that they're rostering with clever, that implies to me that for a high school kid, six, seven courses might, a kid might be in seven different courses because Clever, unless you add filters, is just gonna blast their full schedule into there. Um, that's obviously a little easier if you've got something like Clever. Um, meanwhile, when I'm looking at the spreadsheets and the exports, doing it by hand, I'm inclined to say it would be easier if we just had one, because it's one row, teacher, class, student. You know, and so from a data standpoint, it seems easy to only have one, but my fear was no, like as Andy suggested, Maybe you wanna have the English teachers proctoring the English one and the math one, which means now we're gonna to need to have two rows per kid. One, you know, so anyway, all that kind of fun. But you know what, if we get it wrong this time, this is sort of our practice run, so. Yeah, and I, and I do like, honestly, Will, what a lot of schools will do, I know Joseph does it with his, and um, people will go and they will extract everything, right? And so that's why if you look at the ad hoc, I added a few extra fields like department or subject, so that you can pull everything out and then you could just say, you know what, we're going to do this in home base or we're going to do this in English classes or that sort of deal. And then get your list culled down. That was, I would, I would, I, I'm with you. I wouldn't necessarily want five classes per kid. So I would be, if I were a new user, I would not be jumping in on clever. I would be kind of pulling out a big list and simplifying it and culling it down. But that's just what I would do. I'm sure people have success either way. I do want to jump in on something Will mentioned too, and I see it coming up as a question in the chat. So um, as far as testing students proctoring, you're not restricted to only proctoring students who are set up as a class um, under you in the system. Anyone who's a proctor could go in and add different students to their test session. So just so you know, you don't have to worry about creating a class for every, every test session or every proctor group. Proctors can pull students from different classes if they need to. So being conscious of time, we're at 1.05, so we've run a little over. Any questions that we've not addressed in the chat, we'll make sure that we capture. Um, I did put a link to our website where we have been posting all of those question and answer documents, so they will be there. And then we will be posting this um, video, the session to our website also, so you'll be able to access it there. And then I did also add a link in to the chat. We have a technical assistance session to walk through some more of these elements. If you would like to try them next week, that's next Thursday. So that link is also there. And that link will be sent out via email to tech directors and DACs as we usually do. And then next Friday session, our usual office hour session, we're gonna devote to accommodations and examining how accommodations go into the system. So really trying to target that support. Varun, I see you have your hand up before we close. Yes, Jeanette. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to like be a little cautious while you save an Excel as a CSV. Like if you're doing a manual, uh, manipulating the file manually and you have a comma put into a column, the columns get queued to the right. So you should be a little careful while you save the export from Excel to a CSV, that they, the column fields don't have a commas in them, which cues the columns to the right. 
And the second thing, uh, the NEO report updates every hour. It's not every day. It's, it's every hour it gets reported, like refreshed. Those are the two things I wanted to mention. Yeah. Thank you. All right, everybody. So I hope you found today useful. As I say, this information will be posted. Noia, folks, thank you for joining us today and for your technical expertise. Joseph, thank you. Andy, thank you. And I've missed the last individual that you mentioned, Andy. Yes, Sam. Sam, um, Sam, thank you very much for your help today. Fred, it's good seeing you. And we will see you all next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye.